I'm Todd New with MedPage Today. I'm at the European Society of Cardiology meeting in Paris, and I'm joined by Dr. William Zogby of the Methodist DeBakey Heart and Vascular Center in Houston and President-elect of the American College of Cardiology. Welcome. Great to be with you. Um, we're here to talk about the PURE study. Uh, can you describe a little bit about what that was and what it found? The PURE study started in 2002 looking at uh, variability in the use of aspirin or statins in individuals who have documented uh, coronary disease or stroke. So they are for evaluating use of drugs in secondary prevention and looking at the variability of that utilization between low-income country, medium-income country, or, or high-developed countries, a uh, total of about 17 countries. And this was you know, pioneered by Dr. Selim Youssef in Canada. And the, the findings were certainly interesting and eye-opening because in low-income countries, compared to the high-income countries, uh, there was quite a bit of variability of utilization of these proven secondary prevention drugs like aspirin, a difference of about one to, two, one to uh, seven, and uh, in statins, one to 20-fold difference between these countries. So that's one comparison we've heard about, and the other that we've heard about was that even within the high-income countries, there was also significant variability in utilization, which would open our eyes that in proven therapy, uh, we have a problem of, of delivery of care to individual patients, and how do we optimize this? We need, obviously, to find out what are the reasons for these variabilities and address them because I think it will be very effective if we can find solutions to these problems to improve healthcare, even beyond delivery or, or discovery of new drugs. And uh, the U.S. was not included in this particular study. Um, do you think that the findings, both of the underutilization of these medications and also the variability in the use within the country, would apply to the U.S.? Obviously, we don't have any data, but I suspect there will be variability. There are variabilities in every country, and, and even in the United States, we have you know, uh, uh, differences in socioeconomic status and availability or access to uh, physicians or health care. So I would presume some of the factors may not be the same factors, but some of the factors that are operational in the other comparison, if you will, high-income countries would be still operational in the United States. So uh, uh, it's not, the U.S. is not immune to this. I think we don't have the data at this stage to, to, to show it, but I would suspect it's somewhere there. Now, Dr. Yusuf, um, during his presentation at the press conference, mentioned um, a reason for why the U.S. wasn't involved in the study, um, saying that it was a low-cost study and that the participating countries had to cover a lot of the costs themselves. Um, and he said the U.S. is not very good at contributing and being generous about these things. That's a quote. Um, would you agree with that statement, or how would you respond to that? I think, obviously, the U.S. has, has contributed a lot of research and a lot of innovation and, and understanding about healthcare delivery and its issues and its problems. Uh, I cannot speak for Dr. Yusuf himself. Obviously, he was the PI, and he was the one initiating this, this trial. But if you think of nowadays, how can you get data similar to, his, to this uh, investigation, uh, we have registries, and the American College of Cardiology has the Pinnacle Registry, which is an outpatient registry. So we can tap on this two million plus uh, database and look at utilization in a similar population with, let's say, post myocardial infarction or after stroke, and look at utilization and, uh, of aspirin, statin products, or other medications uh, to take a look at that and maybe look at the variability uh, even by geographic variability or other subsets, demographic data that we could take a look at. So I think with, with the availability of data, particularly from registries nowadays, we could ask these questions and even more to try to optimize healthcare, and I think that would be a very important endeavor to do. Now, what, time, what types of situation or strategies uh, could be used to, to solve both the underutilization problem and the, the variability based on socioeconomic status and other things? Obviously, a first step in, in uh, understanding you know, these, these data, which I think these data certainly are very believable, is to try to get to the root cause of, of this situation. And what are the factors that are involved 
and what are some of the factors that are remediable that you could do something about. Uh, you know, depending on the situation, maybe uh, access to a, a physician or a healthcare professional. Uh, that could be one a cost, could be another issue, although uh, aspirin, I think, would be, by, by all standards, a, a very low-cost low uh, therapeutic uh, uh, endeavor in these situations. Statins, although generic, still are costly, and I think you have to look at the particular situation. Importantly, believe it or not, at least in my opinion, is education of these individuals, since they've had most likely, they've been in touch with the medical institutions one way or another uh, during uh, their either acute myocardial infarction or stroke since they were diagnosed as such, is, uh, is I think the lack of education that these are medications that need to be taken for a long, long time. Most patients, I think, in my opinion, think of medications just like treating a, an infection or something like that, that these are short-term, that they could be cured from it. Particularly, we're talking here about asymptomatic situations. So I think education will play a, a very important role and reinforcing the education at, at periods of time. I think you know, we're human and people prefer not to take medications that are costly and inconvenienced, but I think some contact with healthcare professional, it doesn't have to be a physician, could be part of the healthcare team of reinforcing this behavior, looking at compliance, and I think this is an area that faces not only the United States, it faces really the whole world, just like shown in the PURE trial. Well, thank you very much for making time for us today, Dr. Zabi. My pleasure to be with you. Within Focus at the ESC meeting in Paris, I'm Todd Neal, MedPage Today. Mm -hmm.